Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Vanessa Rose. So happy you decided to tune in and join us for another great edition today. We are very happy to be joined by Shiloh Lundahl, which is a licensed clinical social worker, and he's the co-director of Arizona Family Institute. Thank you so much for joining us today, Shiloh. Thank you. I appreciate being here. Yeah, so good to have you. I know it's been a while since you've been here, but you always have great information to share. And today we're going to be speaking about youth. But before we get started, if you wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit about who you are and your family and what you do. Sure. So um, as you said, I am a licensed clinical social worker. Um, I spend a lot of my time working with uh, families with parents and with families and I teach parenting classes um, I have three kids of my own I've been married for about nine years Wow very neat and how old are your kids they are um, eight six and four. Oh, and I think we're gonna see a video later of the yes. four-year-old she's yes, a little cutie pie so mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure you're a very proud father mm -hmm. but with three girls my goodness or uh, they're not there are three girls no the, there's a boy in the middle there's a boy in the middle okay mm -hmm. so he can help protect them then so <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Shiloh. And uh, how long have you been practicing here? Um, I have been practicing for about uh, five or six years in okay. Arizona. Great. Well, mm -hmm. thank you again for being here and taking time from your practice to be here and share with our viewing audience a little bit of great information. Okay. For you watching at home, today we are covering youth, and our first topic is teaching kids responsibility. Um, responsibility, that's something that I think applies to so many different parts of our life from mm -hmm. whenever we get older and we have work and school and things, but uh, how do parents teach their kids responsibility? Well, I think that a lot of parents try to teach their kids responsibility by explaining why responsibility is so important. And so what they'll usually do, they will give their kids some sort of task to do. And the kid kind of avoids the task, doesn't really want to do it. And so the parent, wanting the child to learn responsibility, will then remind the child, OK, you really need to do this. This is important. Like, for instance, with homework. This is really important that you do homework. Um, and then they come back and they remind the child again, you know, you really want to do your homework. It's really important. And then pretty soon, um, the parent gets really angry, frustrated, and yells at the child, right? And um, that's the way that they try to teach responsibility. But um, it doesn't work very well when parents teach responsibility that way. Um, one of the classes that I teach um, is based off of the Love and Logic curriculum. And one thing that Love and Logic talks a lot about when um, teaching responsibility is there are four steps to responsibility. The first step that you want to give a child is you, tell, you give them a task mm -hmm. that you know that they can do. Okay, So this might be, um, an example might be to clean up your room, right? And, um, or clean up the toys in the loft. Let's mm -hmm. use an example that, uh, um, that I've used before. <laughs> and so um, then you hope that your kids actually do not complete the task. And the reason that you hope this is because kids learn responsibility best by seeing the consequences happen mm -hmm. of of um, not completing something that they need to complete, right? And then the third step is you, with sadness and empathy, you allow the consequences to happen. And then the fourth step is you give them the task again. So that, that's a four-step process in helping teach kids responsibility. Wow, so it's, it's teaching them, it's almost a reverse way of teaching them then that by doing responsibility, by, by not taking responsibility for what you're supposed to do, this is what happens. So whenever they see, so it's basically, it's giving your children the opportunity to process something that maybe parents wouldn't think their kids are capable of that at a young age, but they are. Well, yes, it's that, but, but really what it is is you want them to fail at certain things. And I think that's really hard for a lot of parents to allow their kids to fail. Because they think, well, if my child fails, that means that I'm a bad parent. And, um, and they really don't want their kids to fail. But a lot of great things can come from when a child fails at something. So let me give you an example. And we'll use the example of the loft, mm -hmm. right? So um, my little girl, and she was about five at the time, right? And she had some toys out in the loft, and she was playing with them. And I said, OK, Eliza, it's time to clean up the loft. 
And um, so she's up there and she's playing. And um, I said, Eliza, it's time to clean up the loft. And she's like, I don't want to. And I think, well, it's time to clean up the loft. You're going <laughs> to clean up the loft. And so she says, no. So I look at her and I think, you know what? I'm going to get this kid to clean up the loft. So I grab her hands and I use them as like salad tongs to pick up the <laughs> toys and put them in these little buckets. And then she's crying and I feel like an idiot, right? And I think this is not what I teach in the classes that I teach. And so the next night, what I did is I um, said, hey, Liza, just clean up the toys you want to keep and I'll take care of the rest. And then I you know, went back downstairs. And then um, I come back upstairs, and she hadn't cleaned up anything. And so then I you know, bring her into the room, give her a kiss, put her down for the night. And then um, when she's in her room and she's asleep, I bring this big bag, and I put all the toys in the back. And then um, I take that bag, and I put it out in the garage. Right? The next morning, she comes out, and she notices that the whole loft is clean, and that all of her toys are gone. And so she starts to cry. And so I knelt down with my arms wide out, and I said, oh, sweetie, this is so sad. And I said, sometimes when we don't take care of our stuff, we don't get to keep our stuff. Oh. And I gave her a big hug. So when I tell that story, a lot of people think, well, what happened? Yeah, what happened what to the happen? stuff? What did happen? I wanted to well, happen. <laughs> um, so I tell her, you know, she asked, well, can I get my stuff back? And I said, well, sweetie, it took a lot of energy for me to put all of it um, to put all your stuff in that bag. What can you do to put that energy back into me? And um, she's like, well, I don't know. And I said, well, I have to um, mop the floor or pull the weeds out, um, out back. And so it was neat to see her and her little brother outside pulling weeds <laughs> to earn that energy back. But the whole key to this story is later on, after this experience, now what I do in order to help, um, have her clean up after herself, I'll say to her, Hey, sweetie, I need you to pick up these things. Um, I need you to pick up your toys or whatever it is. And I'll say, do you want to do it or do you want me to take care of it? And she says, no, I got it. <laughs> so that's one way of helping a child learn that when I don't take care of my stuff, I don't get to keep my stuff, or I need to take care of the things that I need to take care of. Otherwise, it's sad for me. But um, empathy is really the key in the whole process. Because I could have said to her, you know what, Eliza, you left your stuff out, and I told you to put it away, and you didn't put it away, so I threw it away, or I put it out in the garage. And you can't get it until you do something for me, right? But if I had said that, then rather than um, thinking, man, I, I made a mistake by leaving my stuff out, she would have thought, man, my dad is mean. Mm. See what I'm saying? So it's, it's disciplining with love. It's yes. going that extra mile. It's... Uh, not lazy parenting because <laughs> it takes more time and effort on your part as a parent mm -hmm. and I think that sometimes whenever you see kids out then a lot of times in this generation they're not a lot of children aren't very well behaved and their parents don't really have a lot of control over them um, at least from what you see in just the general consensus mm -hmm. it's because it takes that extra step and it takes that extra mile of parenting um, how can parents hold their children? I, I know that with responsibility comes accountability. Mm -hmm. How can parents uh, hold their children accountable? Yeah. It's a good question. Um, oftentimes, parents will take responsibility for their, ch their children's mistakes on themselves. Mm -hmm. Again, because they feel um, that uh, they don't want their kids to fail. And so they take the responsibility on themselves. I think when we do that, we rob kids of the opportunity of learning responsibility and being accountable for what happens. Sometimes I think parents want kids to be accountable so much that they try to drive home the lesson. And I think sometimes that just creates friction. Um, allowing kids to learn from their mistakes and then backing off and not trying to drive home the lesson I think kids become a lot more accountable. Because when they recognize, you know, when I don't, again, going back to that example, when I don't take care of my stuff, it's my stuff that, you know, gets taken away for a while. And so they are accountable to themselves without me needing to tell them you need to be responsible, you need to be accountable. And so from my own personal experience, I have a niece and a nephew, and they're uh, four and 
seven now, my goodness, time goes fast. Mm -hmm. And my sister-in-law just the other day called my mom and said, you know, Vanessa said Orlena, I don't know what to do. I have Josh here and he refuses to do his homework. Mm -hmm. he refuses. She's like, yeah. I just, I'm ready to scream and I don't want to scream and I want to cry. Mm -hmm. What does a parent do in that point? Because you can teach them responsibility in that, but they are gonna start to grow older and their demeanor is gonna change and they're gonna get their little mind of their own. What does a parent do in that situation to help teach them at that point as they do get older and more strong-headed and some kids are like my nephew are just more, there. he gets that from our side of the family, yeah. <laughs> just more strong-headed by nature. What does a parent do? You know, when it comes to school, um, we could probably spend <laughs> hours just talking about what to do when it comes to kids in school. Um, but the principle is the same. If I take responsibility for my children's success on me, if I take that responsibility on me, they tend to release that responsibility off of themselves. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So um, if you're, is it your sister that you were talking about? Sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. Yeah. So did she um, pass high school? She did, yeah. So she already got her diploma, right? She got a, yeah, and so, college and everything, yeah. yeah. So she did a great job, uh -huh. right? Um, oftentimes, um, parents feel like we need to do that for our kids, but we need to remember, you know what? I did go through school. I did do my work, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the best thing that we can do for kids is provide them with opportunities to succeed, but not force that they take those opportunities. So what that might look like is saying something to the effect of, you know, if you have a, a kid in grade school, you can say, you know, between four and five at night, we do homework. You know, I provide you this, this time for homework so we're not doing watching TV, we're not um, listening to music or out with friends. And then if you need a little bit more time after that, you can spend some more time on it. But between that um, time, it's just homework time, mm. okay? I'll be, I'll be around if you need my help, um, but it isn't that I'm going to force them to do it. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times parents view academic success as um, life success. And so if you don't do well at school, that means that you're going to fail in so many other areas of life, when it really isn't true. A lot of people, once they find something that they are passionate about, they really go for it, and they do very well in it. But sometimes when we force kids, um, it, it just creates, again, a rift between us and the parents. And with and responsibility kids. comes um, consequences and accountability. So mm -hmm. maybe if a child didn't want to do it or they didn't do a good job on their homework and they were really giving you a hard time, would it be advisable then to let them deal with the consequences of the teacher or as a parent, are you supposed to step in? Where do you step in on those boundaries where you're taking the consequences of their actions versus them taking and how do you, mm -hmm. how do you monitor that or differ between yeah. letting that happen? I think it's a great, um, uh, a great idea to have a good relationship with the child's teacher, mm -hmm. but then also allow the child to have consequences at school, right? And, um, you know, whatever the consequences may be, mm -hmm. if that's missing recess or mm -hmm. something like that, then allowing that to happen there um, and just being a support to the teacher, I think is very, very helpful. Um, sometimes uh, you can step in by, you know, this is an idea. Um, you can step in, you see a kid, maybe a little bit older kid, he's not, you know, doing well at school, at homework and things like that, yet he has a whole bunch of toys. He has, you know, the video games, um, you know, a lot of, you know, the iPod, the, the other things like that. Um, so one thing that parents can do is, you know, when the kid is at school and then he comes home and he realizes, where are my video games? Where's my iPod? Where's all my stuff? And then the parent can say, again, empathy is the key. The parent says, oh, you know what, son? I just need to apologize. I was teaching you something that is totally not true, and I am sorry. At this point, the kid is a little confused, and he's wondering, what do you mean? Say, well, I was teaching you that you can have all of the nice things in life without doing much work for them. Mm. And I am so sorry. Wow. I, would, I would hate for you to leave my home at 18 and think that I should be able to get everything nice in life without putting forth much work. Wow. So working their way to those privileges, because they are privileges yeah. to have an iPod and have an, I, a, 
yeah. iPad and video games and all that is. Yeah. Such wonderful advice. I'm sure your children are wonderful. I know no children are perfect. <laughs> Just great advice. Thank you so much, Shiloh, for this first part of uh, Joy in Our Town. And if you have any questions, his information has been displayed at the bottom of the screen periodically. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that their website, Arizona Family Institute and Parent Arizona, you have, they have a lot of great information on there, too, yeah. for parents. Mm -hmm. Um, so feel free to, to look at it if you're a parent and you have questions. I know they have a lot of really good resources on there. But please stay with us. We'll be right back after this short break.